Sex Positive Podcast for Monday, July the 20th. Yeah, this episode's kind of late. I was kind of busy on the weekend, and it planned a couple of concerts, did some different musical stuff for my band, Key and Anchor. Um, actually, our last episode, I had to put in Key and Anchor because our video got flagged by YouTube for a song that's like 200 years old. It's supposedly uh, available. I don't know. I'm kind of angry with it. I'm probably going to have to come up with my own theme song or something like that. The Fuckonomics podcast have their own theme song, and it's pretty pretty radical. So I probably need to do the same thing. Just have like one theme song, and then if you guys want to check out the other stuff, then you have to go to my other channel, uh, my uh, my music channel, which that one can get taken down for all I care. I don't really care. So... We've got some feedback. One of my first first feedbacks, which I really appreciate. So we've got some feedback, and her name is Tiffany. I'll be married four years in October to my husband, and we have been through more in these four years than some people go through in ten. Things were even so bad at one point that throwing in the towel almost seemed like the only logical way to go. But when I stood in a church under God's roof before my family and friends, and most importantly before God, I said my vows and meant them. For better or for worse, sickness and in health, rich or poor. While I know sometimes marriage can be irreconcilable, someone cheating or being abusive, but besides that, most things can be worked through. People are so ready to just throw their hands up and give up and move on to the next thing before they really put forth a good fight for their family that they made. I was looking in the newspaper today, and there were two announcements of wedding anniversaries, one for 50 years and one for 60 years. I don't know for one second, I don't know for one second believe that those five or six decades for these people were easy every step. It simply shows that they loved each other enough to push through. I would love to be one of those announcements one day, knowing I gave my all and pushed through the tough. People truly don't value marriage anymore. My grandmother recently said she simply didn't understand the times that when she was young, you found your boyfriend and you married him, and the rest was history. You work through things, you talk through things. She was my, she and my grandfather were high school sweethearts and were together until he passed in 2004. I was with my oldest son's father for six years and never married him. He turned into an extremely physical, mentally abusive man, and I knew that even to survive, I had to get away from him. But I only wanted to get married once in my life and do it right. So no matter how tough times get, I am standing my ground and the vows that I made. So that's from Tiffany. She's really cool. Uh, she's on Face. I'm not sure if she wants to be available on social media or not. Um, so, yeah. It's really interesting stuff. I'm kind of more pessimistic, I guess, when it comes to marriage. But <laughs> that's just how many people around us are all divorced or, you know, they get married and they have these kids. Then, you know, the guy's like 35 and he doesn't really know what to do, you know. Because you still have all this energy and all this stuff that you can do, and it's like, you know, it doesn't really make any sense economically, at least. But, you know, that that's where either you become a Randroid, an Ayn Rand uh, android, or then you become an optimist, um, kind of like Jeffrey Tucker. So these are like celebritarians, like celebrity libertarians. There's the two sides. You know, there's the person who sees, you know, like the bourbon for breakfast. The person who wakes up every morning and is optimistic about life and says, you know what? I'm going to have a thing of bourbon and have my coffee. Or the person like Ayn Rand who had an affair with Nathaniel Brandon and yet um, her relationship with her husband was just completely horrible. And she pretty much pushed everyone around her away and never really had a consistent relationship that she valued. She just had a relationship because she had one. Although in my mind, maybe one of the reasons for that is probably because she was a new citizen in the United States and the Red Scare was going on. Um, So she kept a relationship for purely the sake of having a relationship, not necessarily for love. 
which I find is really interesting. I, I wonder how many people that we all directly know that have married people for the sake of getting someone a green card and are in these relationships just to be in a relationship so that person can stay in the country. Uh, on Fuckonomics podcast the other week, they were talking about the economics of brides, uh, mail order brides, and the economics of people importing other people into this country and other countries as well, um, and kind of where that value meets. And really, what it kind of showed, I think, with their uh, their com- comedic analysis air quotes, um, kind of showed that it's less on love and more on, um, old white men, um, literally buying a human, whether or not that's true. It's an interesting fact, um, that most of them are older. Um, so that's interesting. Last week we were talking about, um, where people can get help. And so this week I wanted to showcase a um, project through the Arlington Archdiocese. And it's called the Gabriel Project Arlington. And you can go on their website, which I will link in the show notes. Um, they have a number, which is one 444 3553 And they speak Spanish. So the say habla español right next to it. Um, and basically what they do is they help, I'll read their whole thing. Gabriel Project of Arlington helps pregnant women with long or short-term needs by offering assistance at the parish level and involves a network of churches, crisis prevention centers, crisis pregnancy centers, and other agencies working together to assist the mother with physical, material, spiritual, and emotional support. The church community responds in a love, unconditional, and non-judgmental manner to the mother, witnessing to an infinite and healing love of God. And this is their kind of quote on the bottom. Each of us is the result of a thought of God. Each of us is willed. Each of us is loved, which each of us is necessary from Pope Benedict. So that was really cool. Um, I saw one of their flyers around in Virginia and I thought it was really interesting because it you know says nothing about anything else. It says, "Do you need help? Are you pregnant? Call this number." And it's a very forward mission statement of, "Do you need help? We don't care what language you speak. We don't care how you got pregnant. We want you to get help no matter what it is that you would like to do, whether you want to get an abortion or whether you don't, and being an objective party for help and assistance in that in that station of life, which is amazing." Um, and that's something that the, the Archdiocese of, of Arlington, Virginia is doing. So, and it, it kind of put a thought in my head is how many people, especially, um, agnostic people, there's a girl, Jacqueline G, she has a, a, a YouTube show and in my, she reminds me a lot of Ayn Rand. She's very pessimistic and <laughs> kind of just points out the bad in life, even though she, she is, she seems very positive. She probably is a very positive person but she's utilizing social media and anything that's on social media as a form of discourse. So, you know, I see her as a person who's very pessimistic and she had a video about abortion, how, you know, it's, it's a basically defending the right of people which want to get abortion, which is totally fine, but not, and only focusing on the right and their inability to care for people instead of that. She just left it at, at what it was. So instead of that, I wanted to showcase, hey, here's something where you can get help. You can call them 24 hours a day, and they will do what they can do within their power to help you if you have a kid. So, you know, take it for what it is, and let's try to live a more optimistic and positive life. back so i was watching a think tank video that my friend sent me and it is entitled american sex norms europeans think are insane 
one of the ones that they kind of highlighted on there was the fact that there was a movie with Salma Hayek in which in Europe was rated six years old because it, you know, shown nipples. And in America, it was, you know, pretty much 18 and over because it showed nipples. Yet in America, it's more commonplace for people to see violence on TV. And they had like a study of, you know, how many murders someone sees on TV by the time they're 18. And it is really interesting. And, th- you know, th- their think tank is, is part of um, the Young Turks. So, what you know, they're more on the... I mean, their, their stake in the game is supporting both um, Republican, well, m- supporting the Democrats, but essentially which supports the Republicans because it's a one-party system. Um, so what was really interesting about it is that, you know, they, they would never come out and say, oh, well, it's because America's in perpetual war um, since the founding of the country. It's, you know, you can't really admit that if your slant is to get more people out to go vote. Um but it is really true. You know, America's been in perpetual war since the founding of the country um, with the great, you know, the great expansion, the, the the American enlightenment, essentially, of, you know, the great expansion and going out west and, uh, you know, taking over Mexican property and Native American property. And, oh, we're Americans, we're here, and we're, you know, we're setting it up, you know. And uh, which is interesting that, that that's a dating norm that um, or like a sexual norm that, you know, Europeans would find completely insane. One other part that I, I find which is interesting is, you know, a couple of years ago, it would have been more normal for only American men to be paying for dates in America. Um, and it's kind of like a, a European, you know, going, going Dutch um, thing, which I you know, now is completely changed. Um, I think it's more evened out within our society that now it's not as commonplace for only men to be paying for dates. Um, people might see it differently, but I, I think we're now of a more mutual and common based society. Um, where it's not only just dudes paying for dates the entire time. Um, especially with the, uh, the two job households and, um, more equality between the sexes. Um, I, I don't think it, I don't know if younger people, maybe 18 or 17, if it's the same way with them, but I would see it at least people in our the later twenties and thirties, it's, it's more common for both people to just pay or whatever. Um, so that, that was interesting. And, and they kind of remarked on the, the sexual education part of it. I'm wondering within America if sexual education is as bad as they want to make it out to seem. Um, I'd like to hear from you guys on what you think um, sexual education is in high schools. Um, I'm not as familiar with uh, public education and what they're teaching these days, but it would be interesting to hear from you guys about it. Um, what would you like to hear within sexual education? Is abstinence only or um, pro-sex um, education the best? What's What do you think is best for society? I'd like to hear what you guys think. Please enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to hearing all of the juicy comments on sexual education in America. Sex Positive Podcast.